So today we have a new pickup and this is the Royal Mint Britannia Gold Bar. So there are a few reasons why I don't tend to buy bars in general in terms of gold. And I'll go through some of those as we uh, go through the video. But first let's take a look and uh, have a closer look at the bar. So the bar comes in this assay and this uh, sort of protective plastic just keeping the assay nice and clean. Uh, I'm just going to leave that on because, you know, why not? In terms of the packaging, you know, it's a nice design. It's uh, about the size of a credit card, that sort of size. And the gold bar itself is actually bigger than what I expected. So this is a one ounce gold Britannia, just for comparison. So you can see it actually, you know, it does look quite a good size. When I first saw a one gram gold bar, it wasn't a Britannia one, but just in general, it looks like a, a SIM card, you know, or even a bit smaller, they're tiny. So I thought one gram bars were smaller than what I anticipated, but this actually does look bigger than what I thought, you know, good size compared to the Britannia coin. And when I've previously had a one ounce cast gold bar, again, that was, you know, very small, like a, a bit bigger than the thumbnail kind of size. But this is, uh, yeah, an impressive size, really. So some of the advantages of gold bars, you can often get quite low premiums. And that is obviously a good thing because you're getting your gold closer to the spot price. So to get the same ounce of gold, you're generally paying a bit less. Now, that is probably the only uh, real advantage. You know, it's nice and uniform, perhaps, that you could have a few of these. Um, but... To be honest, they're not as popular bars as coins. So for a few reasons. In the UK, the gold bars, they don't have a face value like the pound on a Britannia and uh, a sovereign, for example. They also are classed as legal tender and that makes them exempt from capital gains tax. So something like this bar would be in the same boat as something like a Krugerrand. It isn't a British pounds denominated, you know, legal tender coin. Now, I do like bars when it comes to silver, because although the premiums are still high on silver in general, apart from if you're buying old coinage, um, if you have nice coins, you know, shiny bullion like this, especially if they're from the Royal Mint, they tend to milk spot. And for that reason, you know, any kind of premium that you're paying, it just puts some collectors, some people off buying the coin really. So you're playing a bit of a lottery whether your coins will get milk spots and a lot of the Royal Mint ones tend to, especially the Britannias, you know, they just seem to have really, really poor quality uh, for the silver Britannias. So coins in general are preferable for the capital gains tax reason and people just seem a bit more at ease buying a coin, especially when it's got you know all these security features on the modern Britannia based over here in the UK. Um, this coin, it's uh, sorry, this bar, it doesn't actually have any security features. You know, the design, it's quite intricate, and to copy it exactly, yeah, you'd need to, you know, put a bit of effort in. But the bar, it's just easier to mimic in a lot of people's eyes. So it does have the serial number, and you can obviously match that with, um, you know, just this bar. It's not like. If you see a load of serial numbers the same, then it's going to be a bit of an issue because there's supposed to be one of each serial number, obviously. So that would uh, you know, be a first red flag. Um, you can test these bars whilst they're in the assay through the um, Sigma Metalytics and things like that. But um, what you want to look for really is the thickness of the bars. So often in the faked ones, like um, people bring up the Perth Mint bars a lot. You know, Perth Mint do make genuine bars, but there are copies of most bullion items that you get, uh, you know, online. So just be wary of buying anything, whether it's a bar or a coin. If it's like, you know, 50% under spot or 10% of spot or something, it isn't going to be genuine. You know, you often see them online um, found in an old house or found in the loft or something like that. You know, just it's not worth it. Just don't just don't buy them and uh, stick to, you know, some reputable bullion dealers, um, especially if you're not very experienced. So overall, I do like the bar, the design. It does come in the 10 ounce silver. It does come in the 100 ounce silver as well. 
Uh, I haven't seen them in one ounce silver, but I know like the Una and the Lion, that does come in the one ounce size, so maybe it does. And I believe these come in a smaller size in gold as well. Um, I haven't actually seen them, but I think somebody said to me they go right down to the one gram size, which would be very small, and you'd probably struggle to appreciate the design. So it's probably not something I'm going to stack. Uh, I did buy it at a relatively low premium when I picked it up. Um, overall, though, they're not generally much lower premium than your basic Britannias or Sovereigns. So these kind of bars, yeah, I can appreciate the design. It's nice. You know, it's a nice presentation. Um, you can get other bars like Metal Ore, like uh, Valcambi, you know, various minted bars. And generally, I wouldn't bother buying the minted bars because they're just not that interesting. Uh, you know, they haven't really got much of a design. They're just a plain, cheap way of buying gold, which might appeal to some people. But, you know, I did buy this because it was a good premium. And like I say, it's got a nice design on it. It's still a Britannia. So, yeah, it's not something I'm going to stack a lot of. Unless I hadn't got any other options, I would definitely go with coins over bars in general. Now, I do like the cast gold bars, those big lumps, but, you know, they are big sizes. And if I was going to sell them or buy them, like some companies will ship them, um, but the insurance is an issue. So at the moment, if you were to buy like a kilo gold bar, being around the £50,000, it's going to be difficult to post that anywhere. You know, in the Royal Mail... You can send things by special delivery up to two and a half thousand pounds. So even a 50 gram bar, you know, you're at the sort of upper limit there, uh, depending on the spot. So overall, I think I would have a bit of a, a bit of a headache, you know, trying to sell uh, big gold bars compared to just selling multiple coins. You know, I'd much rather buy just a tube of Brits than a bigger bar. Um, so whilst I do like the bar, not something I'm going to stack a lot of. What do you think of the Britannia bar? Do you like the design or do you prefer the coins? You know, if if all taxes and everything like that wasn't an issue, would you buy the bar over the coin? Or regardless, you prefer coins maybe? So let me know in the comments. Talk to you soon.